let's take a look at the origins of the ADF militia with Jane Keogh. Born and raised a Catholic, but his conversion to Islam put him on the path to militancy that defines the Great Lakes region. A road that has ended with him being charged with crimes against humanity and war crimes at the International Criminal Court. Jamil Mukulu is the founder of the Allied Democratic Movement and Forces in Uganda. In the late 1990s, he collapsed various Islamic groups with different interests into the current deadly movement that has put the Eastern DRC on an edge. Initially, the militant group was operating in Kampala, Iganga, and Masaka districts. Shortly after, ADF would move its bases to Western Uganda, near the border with the Democratic Republic of Congo. The groups pushed to exploit political differences between the ethnic Bakonjo people and the Ugandan government and the fact that it could recruit within the DRC were some of the reasons behind the move. The rough terrain in the DRC's North Kivu region also provided a perfect ground for Jamil and his group to launch an insurgency against Uganda. And they did. After suffering heavy losses to the Ugandan military, ADF permanently set base in Beni. In 1998, the Second Congo War broke out. President Laurent Kabila had fallen out with his former allies, Uganda's Yoweri Museveni and Rwanda's Paul Kagame. The two were seeking to oust Kabila. Over six countries were taking part in the conflict, each supporting the two warring sides. Uganda's President Museveni was also a long-time supporter of the Sudanese People's Liberation Movement, which was fighting for cessation from the larger Sudan. To get back at Museveni, the Sudanese President Omar al-Bashir joined the conflict by allegedly funding the Lord's Resistance Army under Joseph Kony and the Allied Democratic Forces against Uganda. This is how ADF participated in the Ituri conflict, together with other armed groups, other militias that were led by Thomas Lubanga and Bosco Ntaganda were also involved. Over 60,000 people were killed and hundreds of others displaced. The group was known for carrying out mass killings of civilians and abducting children in North Kivu and the newly formed Ituri provinces. Ituri was hived off Oriental province during this conflict. The United Nations placed sanctions against it and its leader Jamil Mukulu in 2011. The United States would later designate the group as a terrorist organization. In 2014, Jamil Mukulu was convicted in absentia by a Congolese court for terrorism. Unbeknown to local authorities, Mukulu had escaped into Tanzania, where he was arrested in 2015. He was transferred to The Hague, where he's facing crimes against humanity and war crimes charges. But his arrest has not slowed down the group. It still carries out attacks against local military bases and foreign-owned installations. The recent Ebola outbreak was also a moment for ADF to stage raids against treatment centers run by foreign organizations. After its defeat in Syria and Iraq, Islamic State has found a new base in ADF. ISIL has claimed responsibility for various attacks in the region. This has led to frustrations from local communities who have been demonstrating against ADF, calling on the peacekeepers to intervene. These demonstrations recently turned deadly after several locals were killed at a peacekeeper's base. Our peacekeepers represent the last best hope for millions of people around the world. Some of them operate in highly dangerous environments, just short of full-blown conflict. We can never forget their service and sacrifice. And as the nature of conflict evolves, peace operations face more dangerous environments, adversaries, and weapons. And the Action for Peacekeeping initiative, launched in March last year, was conceived to respond to these challenges. In the recent past, ADF leaders have stayed away from the limelight. The group's initial political calls have since slowed down to uncoordinated levels even as ISIL takes a prominent role. But it's also alleged that some of the attacks that have been blamed on ADF were actually carried out by other militias in the region. And Eastern Congo has plenty of them. Their existence is mainly pegged on internal and external forces, 
keen on exploiting mineral resources in the region.